Hi, Wikimaniacs. Before we get into the episode today, we wanted to take a moment to address the June 24th, 2022 Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. This decision stripped away the rights to have a safe and legal abortion. Everyone should have the freedom to decide what's best for themselves and their families, including when it comes to ending a pregnancy. This decision has dire consequences for individual health and safety and could have harsh repercussions for other landmark decisions. Restricting access to comprehensive reproductive care, including abortions, threatens the health and independence of all Americans. Learn more by visiting choice.crd.co. That's choice.crd.co. If you're able to support others, please consider donating to one of the abortion funds we've linked in the show notes. We encourage you to speak up, take care, and spread the word. Thank you. Greetings and salutations, Wikimaniacs. Welcome back to another episode of Reddit on Wiki. It must be a Monday because I am your host today. It is I, the Punny Pinoy John. With me today, as usual, we got the asshole king himself, Josh Shell. What is up, my guy? How's it going, man? Pretty good, but we have a special <laughs> guest today. We do not have Sean because it is it is a weird recording day for us, and you will not see that ass when it comes to weird recording days, but <laughs> fear not, we are joined back by popular demand, possibly the most well-loved guest of the show. Give it up for Sienna. How are you, wow, Sienna? Wow, thanks. I'm good. Thanks for having <laughs> me on again. So it's exciting. I get to be with John now instead of Sean, so... Making my rounds. Yeah. Next time it'll be without me. Yeah. I'll replace Josh next time. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah. Kick him out. We, we, I'm tired of Josh. I see him every week. Pretty nice. <laughs> me too. Me too. No, <laughs> we have a jam packed episode for you this week as usual. And I promise this time is not going to be as depressing as the last episode or a few weeks ago. Oh, thank goodness. What we have lined bad. up today. <laughs> I mean, there's a potential it could go down sideways, but oh no, it is up to us <laughs> pretty up. much. <laughs> First up, we have a post from r slash relationship advice where a user is asking for help because his girlfriend thinks he's not manly enough. Ooh. Oh, I can relate. Oh my oh, totally god! And this is going to be nice to have a woman's yeah. perspective on this because this is absolutely yeah. perfect. <laughs> So we're doing relationship advice today. Eh? Oh, I'm all over the place as usual, Josh. I don't stick to oh, one okay, flavor, okay. baby. <laughs> then we jump over to today I fucked up where someone decided to eat the hottest peppers they could find due to not having any sense of taste or smell because they contracted COVID. Josh, I know you're not into anything spicy. That might be dangerous for you, my uh, guy. Oh, yeah. I can relate. <laughs> Again, no. And then after that, we jump to r slash true off my chest with an ominous title of tomorrow I'm going to ruin his life. Oh, Ooh. So I like that. I'm excited for that yeah, one. Yeah, that one, uh, that oh, one, that oh. one's a little, ugh. Then we cap off the Reddit portion of our episode by going to r slash confessions where a user slapped a child in the face and shoved him off the scooter. <laughs> Oh, so what, I don't know. I shouldn't have laughed at that, I guess. <laughs> you do hate your neighbor, my guy. <laughs> yeah, it's our upstairs neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> and after the Reddit portion, we'll cut to a quick commercial break and then we'll have our This Day in History by our awesome writer, Alex Underbaki from Weird Distractions, where I narrate Denver Pop Festival's first day on June 27th, 1969. Nice. But before we get to our stories for today, if you would like to submit your own story, head on over to our email at redditonwikipod at gmail.com or follow us on our socials. All links are on the show notes. And if you want to support us, feel free to tell your friends. Sienna, tell your friends, but not really because Always. Josh is dangerous in the mic. Yeah. Leave us a five <laughs> well, like, star. That's like I want to tell my family. Or like I've told my family, like kind of that he's a podcast. And Josh is always like, I hope to God they don't ever actually listen. It's like, fair. Just me. Am I the asshole? Yeah. And then uh, continual swearing for about. Yeah, he <laughs> or does just... not swear in front of my family. Oh, I do not. So. No. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should just introduce. Let's start a cult to the. <laughs> yeah. uh, is that better? Actually, it's Probably not. not. <laughs> <laughs> it gets pretty gory at times. It definitely does. If you want to tell your friends about us, or you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Good Pods. Or if you want to support us financially, Sean is not here to give his $25 shield, but you know, if you want to find his, what, Venmo, it's going to be on our show notes. Just kidding. Um, you can support us. <laughs> you can support us financially by heading on over to our Patreon. 
links on the show notes below. And we just want to say thank you to our amazing patrons. We have Vina, Lindsay, Gabby, Aaron, Taru, Alex, Valentina, Micah, Simonova, Katie, Blue Reina, Christina, Dan, Phantom Fox, Susan, Free Gnome, Sarah, and our new patrons, Mary Ann, Miss Doolittle, and Jasmine. I ran out of breath. I lost track. That. That's a lot. <laughs> so, uh, oh my goodness. We're going to get to a point where it's like just the first five minutes as you listing patrons, which is awesome. <laughs> I'll probably say that at the end of the episode. And I'm just like, I'm going to do like a freestyle of rapping right now with all our, our usernames. Oh, that'd be funny. Oh, like the Pokemon rap. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and I uh, just want to say thank you for your amazing support. And we really do appreciate you. Uh, your contribution helps us keep the show running as well as supporting all the other shows on the Cultivate Podcast Network. Josh, this is our usual Monday spiel. Do you have any comments on YouTube, TikTok, or Discord that stood out to you this week? I do have some on YouTube oh. from our Am I the Asshole? Father puts a lock on his daughter's door. So that'd be two weeks ago from this episode. If you remember, we had the cat pee story, mm -hmm. which on personal news, uh, we just adopted a cat. Yeah, oh. we're getting, well, yeah, we're getting a kitten <laughs> yeah. in about a week. So my boss at the museum I work at uh, brought some stray kittens in and Josh came to work that day to because we were going to my parents after and cuddled with the kitten all day. The cat was obsessed with Josh. Like it was like Josh's cat. Aww. Like I was like, hey, I guess we're getting it because it was like cuddled up. And I guess when we were leaving, it like tried to follow us too and stuff. So we're going to get it next week or so. Yeah. yeah. So I'll bring it on the podcast one day. Aww. It's a little cute. Well, then I guess happy Father's Day, Josh. You're a cat daddy now, yeah. right? <laughs> True. <laughs> True. We're recording on Father's Day just for yeah. anyone. <laughs> So we had the the cat story that it wasn't acclimatizing to the OP's house. We had Sam who said cat pee is so gross and hard to get out of things. Vinegar helps, but once they start, they don't stop, unfortunately, especially if it's a habit. That's true. Because like, that's what I'm all about, too, because we're just in a condo apartment. Yeah. So it's like, I don't want it to like. Start. Yeah, yeah. And once it starts, it's true. Like, cause then they'll smell that from now on and like think that they they can, can. just keep going. So Josh works from home. He's in charge. Have you had <laughs> cats before in the past or any pets in the past? She yeah, has. my parents like growing up were out in the country, so outdoor indoor cats. So it was a little different. Like they would just go outside and yeah like we had a kitty litter and stuff in the garage and stuff but it wasn't so bad my parents issues were they were like hunters outside and stuff so they they scratched the furniture quite a bit oh. which we're hoping our cat will not learn to do <laughs> yeah so. we're definitely hoping for that yeah. well, josh's gonna have some um daddy duties cat daddy yes. duties for the next how many yeah. so months trying to get that cat acclimatized okay it's okay she'll be in the office with me most of the time during the day so she, there's not too much to ruin in there yeah, <laughs> so true. it's easier to keep an eye on her trainer for a bit good to know about the vinegar we, we will definitely yeah probably use that absolutely <laughs> hopefully not too many times though <laughs> and then on that same episode gabriella commented this is truly the highlight of my week i honestly don't even know how i found you guys i just randomly saw you and added you to my shows on spotify and decided to listen and i am hooked your chemistry with each other is fantastic lots of love from the uk so thank you thank you gabriella, gabriella. So nice. Can I add something to that? I find it crazy that when I think I get a lot of comments or I hear I hear a lot of comments about our chemistry. Fun facts with Maniacs, we all never met in the same like we never met in uh, person. You and, before. you and Sean have met. No, I'm, I'm saying all of us. Oh, all three, all three yeah, of at us. the same time. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to have a few more patrons before we can make <laughs> true, that a reality. True. But yeah. fly you guys up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, well, it'd be cheaper for me to fly there. Probably. I'm coming with, obviously. Okay, then it won't be cheaper. <laughs> oh, we're going to eat a lot. Hopefully, but, you can hang because me and Sean eat a lot. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. I eat a lot. <laughs> yeah, she does. I eat more than eat a lot. What? When we, okay, when we, funny story. Often, and faster. Yeah, and faster. I grew up with siblings and always sports playing and stuff. So we had to eat fast. But when Josh and I started dating, I was like starving every time we hung out. Or like I'd go up to his parents' place for the weekend or whatever. And they'd eat like breakfast. Sometimes not, no, a big breakfast, no lunch sometimes and then dinner and then maybe a snack later but not really dessert and i'm a dessert person i eat like like tonight i had three nanaimo bars after dinner and that's that's a slow day for me for Did, uh, john might not know when nanaimo bars i don't, I don't know, know what do that you know is what bars? I they're a canadian thing it's like on the bottom it's like coconut chocolate graham cracker Ooh. base and then it's like a custard Ooh. icing middle and then just straight chocolate on top yeah. so very anyways <laughs> And I used to be starving. And then thankfully I've turned Josh into like a dessert person. And now he eats more because of me. But like, I'm definitely the eater in our now. relationship. <laughs> Don't make me show you my gut, Josh. Like yeah. my wife it's says. It's a good thing they can only see us from the waist the, yeah, uh, up. It's, it's the, good. The it's good up. that way. 
Yeah, my wife always says like dessert is like a different compartment in your stomach. So oh, a hundred percent. I've also Absolutely. turned into a dessert person, but other than that, like I can eat rice like all day. <laughs> it's like <nonstop. laughs> rice is pretty good. That's fair. And then I just have one last comment on that same episode because that was that was our heavy recording session where Sean was not in a great mood that yeah. <laughs> that week, which is fair. There's some of the heavy episodes and uh, stories. So Melissa says, each episode I get closer to giving Sean $25. <laughs> I love Sean. Oh, that's, so nice. <laughs> that's why we don't give out his Venmo. No, we don't. <laughs> he'd be rich and then he'd leave us. He would leave us. <laughs> oh, man. It, it's I just find it crazy that the saddest episode that we did is quite possibly the most popular episode that we did. Yeah. That's almost at 4 million views, that one video. Yes. It's insane. The um, husband leaves his wife who has cancer. It's mm -hmm. such a heart-wrenching story. It was heart-wrenching. Yeah, it was sad, like listening to the, or, you know, reading the comments and it's, yeah, you know, like people, multiple people experience that. And I'm just like, man, how low can these men get sometime? Like, it's really saddening. It's shocking how many comments there were just being yeah. like, oh, this happened to me or like, I know someone this happened to and it's like, holy shit. Yeah, it's crazy. Rough. It, it makes me sad. You power a couple and ready to get to our stories oh, for yeah. today? Awesome. Ready for relationship advice. All right. The first story <laughs> is from r slash relationship advice from user Heron Different 5008. Title is Girlfriend Says I'm Not Manly. Since I, 29 male, moved in together with my girlfriend, 29 female, we have suddenly had a lot of issues. One of them is that she is unhappy with me and wants me to act more manly. What does that mean? Yeah, exactly. I need more context. Because uh, like you can be a man and not act traditionally manly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's fine. Like what What? What defines a man? I don't know. I guess. What defines like. Yeah. You do some tasks in our household chores that would be considered more manly than. Right. But that's but, that's how we define yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's just like taking out the trash. Like, yeah, I don't do that. Which is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of the other she cleaning. She does. She does I, do a lot of the other he cleaning. He does not clean the bathrooms. Doesn't, <laughs> like I'm on the baseboards cleaning. Yeah, I don't trust him with the cleaning. <laughs> Which is but. fair. Which is crazy because it's opposite on my my household. Really? Like, my wife is, she's super handy. Like she loves like building stuff. And I'm just like, oh, I see dust. So I'm going to clean everything. Like I'm just going to like dust everything down, clean the bathroom. Like freaking, oh my gosh. Like, yeah, yeah. like wash dishes in the kitchen. I'm like, ah, this is dirty. But then like we go to Ikea. She buys a drawer. She'd be the one to build it. Like she's super handy. Oh, so. good for her. Damn. So like all those like gender norms, <laughs> like this hits for me. I'm like, yeah. What? Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Like what is she meaning? Is she meaning that or? Okay. So to continue on with that, when we have a fight, sometimes I cry. When I'm happy, I laugh. When I'm lonely at night, I reached out for her hand. When I don't feel good about something, I ask her if we can talk it out. She says it's really unmanly and makes her question if she can rely on me as Ooh. a man. This guy's an emotionally open man. That is rare. Yeah, that's rare. Nice to hear. Like, <laughs> absolutely. Men should be more like that. Yeah. Like, it's important to show your emotions and communicate how you're feeling. Absolutely. So. Sound like a strong king. <laughs> when I brought up that my worldview is not really compatible with judging people for manliness or womanliness, and I want her to view me as a person, not against her ideal mm -hmm. of quote unquote man, she says bringing up the topic again and even asking such a thing is more unmanly. I said it's not up for a debate for what? me, and if you can't change or accept me for who I am, we have to break up. She said I'm being an asshole, and she never said it was a major problem. It's just her feelings, and she can't change her feelings. I should accept that who she is. Where do I draw the line? If we ever have a family, I don't want her teaching our kids they can't cry or ask for help, but she mm -hmm. says it's just her, there you go. quote, feelings. She isn't saying it's wrong or tell me to stop, just she doesn't like it. Yeah. yeah, that's not okay. And I mean, nowadays too, we, we should be stripping down gender norms. Absolutely. Like, that shouldn't be a thing. And, and I, obviously some things do pursue, like, yeah, which are fine as long as you communicate and understand. But like, that's ridiculous. The emotional part is... Yeah, I'd say the yeah. line is you've already crossed it yeah. and you should definitely not be with that person. You should be with someone who appreciates how open you are to being emotional and like even thinking forward to kids. That That's well, exactly. so rare. Like this is just not a relationship that's going to work. No. And especially if she's not willing. Yep. Like, yeah. I mean, if she's willing to be like, OK, let's work on this. Like maybe I need to take a step back and realize some things like then fine. But I don't know. That's just two completely <laughs> different like core parts of who they are so well and he's tried multiple times to bring it up to her and be yeah. like hey like i'm not okay with this whole be more manly shit like 
Yeah, it's uh, crazy. Like you could be, you couldn't communicate more than you already have. So I don't know. I think that's it. I think that you, that's a wrap. Find yep. someone who appreciates you and reciprocate your emotional needs. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the fact that you two brought your own personal take on it. And I found what you said, like, was really what a lot of people are missing. It's what works for the both of you. Like, if you if you were able yeah. to communicate that, hey, these are the tasks that I do around the house or these are the things that I bring to the table as, you know, as a person, not a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. You got to just do what works best for you as a couple, not this whole what society exactly. tells you to do. The, the girl in this relationship is probably watching too many like other podcasters or other crappy TikTok videos <laughs> saying like a man should be doing this. A man should be doing that. What defines a man is this. What defines a man is that. It's it's 2022. Like you're right. Gender norms are supposed they should be obsolete at this point. Everyone should just be treated as humans. Mm -hmm. And if they want to approach things a certain way. They should approach it the way they want it to instead of what society dictates what it's supposed to be. So completely agree with John. 100%. Yeah. 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 And men should be celebrated for having like emotional attention. Yes. Like intelligence. Yeah. Like that's something that's. I think society as a whole would benefit yeah. from more men with yeah. emotional exactly. intelligence. And that's something too, like at a starter relationship, I feel like it is important to communicate how you deal with emotions because if yeah. it's like completely opposite, like that's not going to work either. Like, I mean, well, we're, I guess, pretty opposite. But we're but we're both pretty understanding of each other's yeah, like feelings. range of yeah. of emotions and how we react to things, and we have learned how to like better communicate how we're feeling and and like if we're feeling upset or sad, mm -hmm. we're we're more prepared to deal with that, deal and help with the mm -hmm. whoever's feeling sad or un upset. You know, um, my thing is I just cry. <laughs> like it doesn't even <laughs> and have to and be. That's fine. I have so many emotions, I feel them so strongly, and it's literally like I just read a comic on my phone or I reading a book <laughs> TikToks. or I take a sad, oh my God, this, like saw such a sad TikTok about like this older couple, like adopting a dog. And I was like literally bawling my eyes out, like showing him this. <laughs> it's like this five minute TikTok of just showing me the whole time, just crying. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, anyway, so I, I think, yeah, communicate to your partner what you mm. need, what your expectations are. But then that woman also needs to kind of figure out she needs to unlearn some things I think yeah. she learned early on yep. and that has just stuck with. Probably through her own parents. Yeah. She's learned her Agreed. environment. And, yeah. a, I, and I feel like we've seen so many times in society, like what happens when people bottle up their emotion too much? Like they become so unhinged, whether mm -hmm. it's a man or a woman, that's how serial killers are born sometimes yeah. when they just yeah. don't have any way of, of expressing their emotion. So. I did want to read an edit that they they Ooh. they put they put up. So okay. they put that the part that is confusing is that she is not handing me any ultimatums. Josh' favorite mm. show, by the way. Uh, she is it's not saying. She, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. She is not saying she will break up with me, but she doesn't like it when I get emotional, especially cry. She said she'd rather have me get angry than cry because when I get mm. angry, she can engage in the conversation, but when I cry. She has to drop everything she wanted to say to console me. Overall, I think she is really emotionally immature. But if she doesn't mm -hmm. extend this idea to raising a family and I can control my emotions a little bit, it seems like something that can be overlooked. I'm not sure. I think you could work through it. But the fact that, <sighs> well, it's the issue, though, what stuck out to me was her saying, well, I guess it was her saying it, that she has to drop everything she's doing to console him. That's yeah, not, that's you shouldn't a red be thinking flag. that in a relationship. Like if your partner's you want up to. upset, you shouldn't be like, Oh my God, now yeah. I have to stop reading my book or I don't know, like not taking a phone call or maybe take 30 minutes before you leave the house and just like yeah. figure out what's going on. Like, I know there's like an extreme end to that. Like maybe someone's being toxic and manipulating someone emotionally. Sure. That's mm -hmm. different, but that's not what this sounds no. like. So that's kind of sticks out that maybe she's not, this isn't a good. Yeah. It thing. sounds yeah. like, well, like you said, she needs to unlearn a lot of things and, and whether that be therapy or whatever, her own journey of learning. <laughs> um, Something. Something, yeah. you know, and, and mm -hmm. I don't think you want to be the person to go through that because it's going to be very challenging mm -hmm. to say the least. So, you know, if, if you feel emotionally exhausted by this relationship, I, I, I wouldn't. Don't be in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I'd advise you to quit. And, yeah. you know, sometimes quitting is like the best thing to do. And you deserve someone who is invested in you emotionally as much as you're emotionally invested in them. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, for sure. Good on you, my king, for being emotionally aware and yes. being emotionally <laughs> empowered. I love it. We need to hear more stuff about this, about men stepping up and say like, hey, I have emotions and it's yes. perfectly okay. Shout out to you, my guy. Hopefully you're in a more happy relationship <laughs> right now. But I agree. We are going to be moving on to today. I fucked up. All right. So this is from user almost Bob Saget. 
their story is, today I fucked up by eating the hottest peppers I could find while having no sense of taste of smell due to COVID. Oh, this would kill you. <laughs> I think I would actually pass away. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many stories, John, that like just... My favorite story is... Okay. So <laughs> So you you know those sweet Thai chili like sauces, sauces that yeah, are like... Those are great. Yeah. Yeah. Not spicy, right? They're like mild at best. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> That's not true. Some of them are spicier than others. <laughs> so we're making a stir fry and we have that sauce. And without tasting it, she just pours it on her food. <laughs> and to be fair, it was a little bit spicier than the one she's used to, but it's still like mild, I would say. So she pours it on, mixes it all up and then takes one bite. And she's just like, it's so hot. <laughs> and I can see <laughs> tears forming in her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, do we have any milk? And so I had to I get her. I do not drink milk with dinner. Yeah, it's not a thing. So I had to get her milk and she's just chugging it. Well, force because she doesn't. I'm starving. <laughs> she... I'm going to eat my food. So she's just shoveling it down. <laughs> Tears streaming down her face. <laughs> she just, why is this so hot? <laughs> That's dedication. Yeah. Still, still eat. Thank you. She, Although one she time, finished her plate. Yeah, I mean, I except for the time she, he ordered me a burrito bowl and they put banana peppers in it, and I took a bite and I was like, oh, something's not right here. And then it was so hot, like it was so hot. I was chugging almond milk and I was just like, I literally can't do this. And then so I was like, Josh, like I thought it was a jalapeno or whatever. I was like, taste these. He's like, oh yeah, it's like banana peppers. I was like, but it's really hot. <laughs> I'm like, I can eat it. And I was upset. Yeah, like, that that just, sucked. Yeah. That that was a bad order of uh, yeah. fat so bastards. I, so yeah. you know, don't go to fat bastards. Anyway, so yeah, I would not be able to be this person. <laughs> My wife is the same way. She is, she can't take anything spicy. I don't know if you guys, you have Buffalo Wild Wings up in Canada, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So garlic parmesan is spicy for her already. Oh, oh my god! Oh, I might not. Yeah, be that so bad. it's bad. That's, that's worse than you. Yeah, nice. yeah. She's a, she is bad, so she can't have any. So when I defense eat, and or like you know, I'm an only child, so I have like defense eating problems. So anytime like she would want to try to like get something off my food, I will douse it with hot sauce because oh I know god. she won't touch it. I'm like, do not touch my food. So I put hot sauce all over. I do it. that with mayonnaise. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she hates it. <laughs> All right, we're going to continue on with the yes. story for this one. So my fuck up happened three days ago, and I've just now recovered enough to relive it. Oh. Took them three damn days to recover. Jeez. So I got COVID for the second time over the weekend, and by Monday, I had lost all sensation of taste and smell. At the peak of the pandemic, I joked with my brother-in-law about running a hot pepper gauntlet if I ever lost my sense of taste and smell from COVID because I heard you can handle spicy things. Mind you, <laughs> I've always loved spicy things. But habaneros are usually the hottest I can go. So I started with those, because why not? And nothing. So I thought, let's just jump right into one called the death spiral. Oh my god. Does he not realize like, what, like let's just jump right <laughs> yeah. in? Yeah. It's like it's like those people who can't don't have feeling and like they can't they have to be careful around stoves or anything hot oh, because yeah, yeah. if they touch it, it still hurts you. It just you can't <laughs> you don't have the sensation. <laughs> so they jump to a death spiral, which is hotter than a ghost pepper but not as hot as a Carolina Reaper. Oh. This is coming from someone who just had a sandwich with a Carolina Reaper on it. Jesus. It was delicious. It? Yeah, That's I impressive. love spicy food. Oh my gosh. Uh, this is the moment where I think I can pinpoint where my fuck up happened. Nothing. No taste, no spice. So I immediately threw two Carolina Reaper peppers oh. down followed about 10 to 15 pieces of habaneros and death spiral peppers. Why? About... <laughs> <laughs> like, does it? Why is he doing that if it doesn't even taste? Like, yeah. you can't even taste it at that point. Yeah. What's the point? <laughs> and this is why isn't today I fucked up. <laughs> oh my god! About halfway through, my body started to retaliate. I oh. was sweating. I was numb. I felt like I was going to die. Sienna, I bet you can relate. Oh, with I, this I'm guy. getting like flashbacks. Yeah. From <laughs> I feel you could die from that though. Like that many hot peppers. Yeah, like in your digestive. <laughs> like I don't know system. what don't would know. happen, but yeah, I feel like something would go wrong. Probably. But, oh. but the burn wasn't there until it was. Oh. It's hard to describe. Anyway, I suffered through the night with awful indigestion and took ant. Is it anti acids? Anti acids. I can't say that. Yeah. antacids to try to calm it i was miserable i didn't think it could get any worse but then the moment came where i had to evacuate oh. them and my god the pure fire and rage that my sphincter had was unbearable oh. 
<laughs> it felt like Satan himself was trying to claw his way out oh. of my rectum. <laughs> I swore I'd shat blood, but there was none. For hours afterwards, I swear the fire feeling that came from my exit hatch could have made s'mores for the entire family. Oh my God. I'm still in pain oh. days later. Jesus. Oh my I mean, that's got to be a lesson learned. I don't know what he expected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You had to know. You, yeah, you might not be able to taste, smell, or, or feel anything in your mouth, but you had to know it was going to, you're going to feel it on the other end. Yeah. <laughs> The very, very obvious thing that was going to happen. Oh, my God. Well, I'm sweating for that guy and I'm not even eating any. Yeah. I know. <laughs> right like, I literally can't imagine that. Like, yeah. I, if we ever I get COVID, that's what we're going to try. Absolutely. No. Oh, no. my <laughs> gosh. So what's like the hottest pepper you'd go with, uh, Sienna? A sweet pepper. <laughs> A sweet pepper. Josh? I don't, I've tried some pretty spicy hot sauces. I don't know what was in them, though. To be fair. Like, I don't know the levels. If that makes sense. Yeah, because you had some really hot ones. Yeah, oh, but like I, I eat banana peppers and jalapeno peppers all the time with no no issue. I, so I don't know. I, I don't know the list. I have to look it up. So I, I I'm unfortunately cannot answer that. So if we ever get popular to a point, would you ever go to the show Hot Ones? Oh, absolutely. Because you think you could get, get past like the fourth or fifth one? Because so I know after like five, I'd probably die. So our friend does actually have the That's last dab good. sauce and I tried it and... I did pretty well. Like it was yeah. hot. Don't get me wrong. But I didn't die. I didn't like, die. Was fine. Yeah. Mm. And to be fair, that what we it was tacos we had it yeah. in. Yeah. So it's like a mix of like cooler vegetables and stuff like that yeah, to like even it out. Yeah, different if it was like covering. If it was like, just a yeah. wing, it might be a little oh. bit. <laughs> I might not make it, but I would try it for sure. It, that's one where you have to like answer questions while eating. Yeah, while well, you eat a wing. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. happens if you yeah. don't eat one? I think there's people that bow out oh, for sure. So but they can just done. bow out. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. it's like a it's like a gauntlet. You try and do it yeah. to to make it so some sort of hall of fame. What it, has someone ever like just taken one by the first one and been like, "That's it. That must be a short interview." I mean, maybe. <laughs> well, I've never seen it. I don't think That'd they'd air it if it yeah. was that case. Uh, I think people yeah. go on knowing, so like yeah, they they better. have to try. But yeah. I don't know. Interesting. All right, what yeah. they can take. All right. Well, I prepped you for like kind of a spicy one because this one could get kind of dark so. oh okay we'll see all right well not dark but like kind of sad and depressing okay so dark so <laughs> that is dark okay yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah 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 you're right you're right so this one is from a true off my chest subreddit this is from user clean stable 7973 titled tomorrow i'm going to ruin his life right oh is this right. an x it goes like an x story <laughs> i'm very excited for this one i have been with him for three years now we planned on getting married when our lives settled down. I wanted to start a family with him. I loved him more than anyone else in this world. And I've sacrificed so much for him, moved away from my home, turned down jobs so I could stay with him, and stood by his side as he started to go back to school. I gave him my world. That's a, that's and he a, cheats on me. Oh, oh no. Yeah. <sighs> Jesus. I found out over a month ago, the scumbag got cocky. And I found out he was cheating on me with two different women. How do you, okay, whenever that happens, and especially if you're like juggling people and like you're doing it for a long term, who has the time for that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's crazy. I have this conversation with my wife, with my wife sometime. I'm just like, hey, I don't think I have the capacity to cheat. And she's like, why not? And I was like, one, oh, well, she told me, she was like, well, one, you're cheap as fuck. So I don't think you could ever yeah, like, like have a side chick. Wise, yeah. Yeah. She was like, two, you're extremely lazy. If she ever wanted to meet up somewhere, like you would, wouldn't drive. And you're probably going to make up an excuse that gas is really expensive and I don't want to pay for that gas. I'm like, wait, That's so you're it. telling me I'm not capable of cheating? She's yeah. like, no, I, I can't see it. I'm yeah. like, damn, you're right. <laughs> I like that one of the reasons wasn't just like, we're so in love. We <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's just like, yeah, you're just a lazy piece of shit. Yeah. So, like, I doubt you could. Not. So funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, I don't know how they can balance that. No. Yeah. I don't even have energy to get off of my bed sometimes, let alone juggle, like, three relationships. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Two episodes of edit a week. We hang out all the time. And then, like, we're going to have a cat. Yeah, there'd be no way. I barely yeah. have time for myself. <laughs> and speaking of that, Sienna, I don't know if you watch trash TV, but Sean and I love watching 90 Day Fiance, right? That's kind of our shit. I've seen like a few episodes of that. I do watch trash TV, actually. Absolutely. Oh, girl, let like, me tell you about this one trash TV that I actually watch with my wife now. It's called Finding Sister Wife. Oh, my oh. God. It's a polygamous relationship. 
And they're 90 day fiance style. <gasps> oh no. Oh my God. We have to watch. <laughs> yeah. What have you done? It is John? so <laughs> crazy. <That's> wild. <laughs> You're welcome, Josh. <laughs> Our next podcast is going to be me and Sienna doing that show with you. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get John on all yeah, us yeah. three. Yeah, we'll I mean, I'm, I'm aware of it. <laughs> What's it called again? Finding sister wife. Something yeah, like that. Like some, I'll yeah, find yeah. a correct one. Okay. I'll think okay. of a clever pun for our name, podcast <laughs> <Nice>. name. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, by the way, there were, he, okay, so he was cheating on, with two, two different women. One is a TA at his university. The other, his best friend's girlfriend. Oh. I wow. am livid. Double yes. fucking. Double whammy. What? I write this. Oh, oh go ahead, Josh. <laughs> I'm just so angry. <laughs> like, to do that. To not think you're going to get caught. Like you, you clearly have to be just, you don't care about anyone in your life. If yeah. you're clearly, if you're cheating on your girlfriend and also fucking over your best friend. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, Cause I do want to put it out there. Like, I think like cheating just in hearing stories and stuff, it happens more than you think. And oh, yeah. it's a mistake. And I know people are going to say that it was a choice, which I agree Sometimes. as well. Yeah. And, but I also think that if someone does it once or whatever, obviously awful for that relationship, that person should leave them and everything. Yeah. But that person themselves, if they've grown from it and they've learned from the past and they've made, I don't know, trying conscious for the future, decisions. conscious decisions yeah. to be better, then that's fine. You know what I mean? Like, it's not something that I think you're just an, you're an asshole for the rest of your life. But yeah. in like this situation, but I feel yeah. like it's a yeah. little bit more. And I'm not saying you cheat. I'm not condoning cheating. I'm just no. saying like there's worse things people can do. And I think you can come back from it if you are a good human being. But yeah. in this situation, like that's friendships. That's, that's a lot. Well, it's your relationships, yeah. all of them. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, yeah. You're the closest people in your lives. You're just fucking over. Yeah. And you're right, Sienna. Like there's a situation where it's like a black and white type of thing yeah. where it's or, you know, maybe, maybe you were just extremely drunk that night and you just didn't have like your, you know, your senses to you, but it is a, it's still like a, a problem and you still need to oh, address absolutely. it. And the person <laughs> exactly. you're yeah. exactly. with has every right to leave you with, without an explanation at all. Yeah. But I just think like there are, you're right. It's not always black and white and people come back yeah. from this, but I'm, I'm curious to see how he handles this. <laughs> well, he's already done it twice. Happened. At least so, yeah. he's done it twice. Minimum. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> I know this is not an, am I the asshole episode, but my guy, you are the yeah, asshole. You are the yeah. asshole. Yeah. <laughs> so I write this post choking back venom. I love them so much. He was my world, but now he will be the world I burn to nothing but oh. ash. I love the rage. Hell mm, yeah. Me too. I pay for everything since he quit his job last year to go to school. I was more happy to help him. I make enough to support us both. The only upside is the student loans are in his name with no connection to me. Mm. It will hurt to push the scumbag out to sea, but I will survive. I have held out for a month, enough time to create what I call the day his world burns. Tomorrow we are hosting a party. I arranged for his family to come, but my family will sadly not be able to make it. I have packed everything valuable already and the suitcase is in the back of my car. My brother will come during the event tomorrow to take the car that is in my name that the dirtbag drives to my parents' house. The joint account, which is all my money anyway, is already empty. Nice. The event will be great and he thinks it's for us to announce our engagement to his family. What will happen in reality is I will announce my departure from his life. Oh I have already taken a job out of state and have lined up a new place to live. I will start by telling everyone what he is into. The screenshots of him asking his friend's girlfriend oh. to piss on him. Oh. And the many other fantasies his degenerate mind came up with will be passed around. Oh. I will hand him the notice to vacate as I have already broken our lease. We need to be out by the end of the month. I will then end off by informing him I have already reported he was sleeping with a TA for one of his classes the previous semester oh, yeah, to the university. Like a... Yeah, no, no. Yeah. And that I am sad I won't see the fallout from that. His friend also has a message for him that I will deliver informing him that his friend group never wants to see him again as well. And with that, I will leave. I will not look back. I will set his life on fire and walk away. This girl is literally like ruining his life. <laughs> This is what Kelly Clarkson sang about in that song. Like, I dug my keys. That's not Kelly Clarkson. That's, <laughs> um, oh Damn my God, it. now you're messing me up. It's like Kelly Clarkson. Carrie Underwood. Oh, yeah. right. Sorry. My I bad. Think, the okay. Wrong artist. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's crazy. Okay. To be, though, like holding out for a month. 
how, right? Yeah. Like how do you live with a person Just and pretend festering. for a month? Like yeah. that's a little much for me. I think for her mental health, I think that's probably rough. I would have got out of there early. Like, oh yeah. If yeah. say I was on your phone or something, I saw something, you were asleep. I'd be literally like leaning over you in bed. <laughs> choking me. <laughs> Just standing on my yeah. windpipe. And then it- <laughs> but yeah, no, that's a lot. And I think that's probably why it's being such a huge plan. Like she's let it manifest. So I, yeah. like, I don't know if that's great for her mental health, but like, damn, I mean, all power to her. Like yeah. she can do whatever she wants and stuff. Like, I mean, I love the plan, the execution. Yeah. It's going to be beautiful. But yeah, Weird. for yeah, like you said, for your own mental health, definitely don't stick around that person for that long. Because yeah. I mean, that's just it's just a month you've kind of wasted. Not well, wasted, no. but like, you know what I mean? Like, like you're focused on revenge. Versus, yeah. And people have every right to like take it how they want and Absolutely. deal with it how they want. But make it a week. <laughs> yeah. And then like grow from it. Like get Make some, it a week, Tom. Need... exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, oh, she like, I know this isn't an am I the asshole, but she's. <laughs> <laughs> not the asshole at no, all. No, no, like, no, 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 no. Yeah, and uh, he is, and hopefully this is a learning experience for and, him, and he'll be better in the future. And honorable mention for asshole, that guy's girl, best friend's girlfriend. Yeah. What yes. The fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, Absolutely. Yeah. The exact. It's the exact same situation, just reversed, just right? Yeah. So we should flame her just as hard. Like, yeah, yeah, how the yeah, fuck? Yeah. How fucking dare you? Just, yeah. oh my god. Hopefully, they all learn from the situation and I become hope, better people in the future. Not- I hope the best friend and OP get together. What a love story! Yeah, I feel like there's too much like that write that story baggage. Ba- baggage that is a lot of baggage there. To that. Yeah, yeah, they'll have so much to connect with. I mean, it's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But. Well, could I offer you an update? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I hope I'm right. <laughs> so there is an update for this story already. Actually, it got removed by Reddit, but I was able to dig it around. Way so. back nice. machine. Let's go. So they say that hubris is the downfall of man. I freaking love her writing, yeah, by the way. Like, it's she amazing. Could write a book. Yeah. I know. Yesterday, I planned to ruin his life in front of his entire family. I worked for a month to create the scenario that would cut him the deepest. I had patiently waited for the chance to storm out of his world in a blaze of glory. And then I hit the front page of Reddit. I realized I I realized I had fucked up when he was not answering my texts and had not shown up hours after he told me he would be home. Did she use her real username? Oh, well, it's such a or specific probably. situation, like a TA yeah. and a friend's girlfriend. But if like, you use your username and he knows what your username is, like if they just say, if they both had read it and she posted using her username, he could see it. Well, to be fair, yeah, but he could she, see too her, on the front page of Reddit. Yes. Her post got like upvoted like a bunch of times. So maybe that's why it made it to the front. Yeah. So even if she had a throwaway right. um, username, it probably got in the front. So that, that was probably the scenario. So I realized I had fucked up when he was not answering my texts and had not shown up hours after he told me he would be home. I had hoped it was a happy accident. Literally a car killing him before I had the chance. <laughs> That's a little much. Let's not wish yeah, it is. on someone. Yeah. Yeah. No, that. <laughs> wish he has like no, no, no. wet socks for the rest of his yeah. life or something. She, or like, she has the right to wish it just as long as she doesn't commit any actions to no, actively make so. him die. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I would never personally things. wish death on her. Right, yeah. so you we, we all disagree on this. <laughs> I think she, she can wish. She's not really doing anything. She just, no, I don't care. You don't wish that <laughs> upon people. That's not yeah. something you do. I'm I'm sticking Agreed. with my guns there. Okay. I'm ta- I'm I'm on Sienna's Thank side you. on that one. <laughs> so I don't know how many men in the world are currently cheating on their soon-to-be fiance with their best friend's girlfriend and a TA. However, the one who mattered in my plan found my Reddit post. Oof. I called his mother and found out that he had run home to his parents. What a fucking baby. <laughs> he told them that we had a fight and that we were probably through. Oh my god. I was god. and still am livid at myself. So his mother asked me what had happened as he left out a few details. So I decided to tell her that he was cheating on me with a TA and his friend's girlfriend. I soon heard shouting before she hung up. I texted my ex that he had until morning to return my fucking car before I reported mm-hmm. it stolen and sent the screenshot of his text to his parents and siblings. Nice. Yeah, that's fair. fair. My car was sitting in my driveway when I woke up. I contemplated sending the screenshots anyway, but his mother sent me a heartfelt text yesterday apologizing for her son's actions, and I feel they deserve to be spared from his degenerate actions. I think actions. that's probably the good choice. Not saying that she couldn't have done it, like you do what you have to do, but like I think being the bigger person a little bit with that, and if the mom is like already on your side, and there's no reason yeah. to yeah to send those. Yeah. So I and my father will be moving all my stuff today, and I won't be coming back after that. I know you'll be reading this, you cheating fuck. You're a cowardly <laughs> piece of shit. 
Just know I am not above sending out all the screenshots if you ever dare to come back into my life. Fair. Oh, and your ex-friends all know about your piss and scat fetish. I can't control what they do with the information, so good luck with that. Oof. Nice. That's good. I mean, I'm glad she informed the best friend as yeah. well of oh, what was yeah, happening. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, that's super unfortunate, but I think she... Uh, I'm glad she's not with him anymore. Yeah. And just is yes. going to move on. She's got... I, it sounds like she's got her life together and she'll be able to move on. And, and she's got a great story. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Tell us the, parties. She, like, <laughs> she has... Like, look at all the skills that she displayed in the story alone party yeah. planning that's one that's pretty much um like a project management at this point because that's a scheme altogether <laughs> absolutely right? oh, for sure yeah yeah if, if i was a hiring manager and i read that story i'm like girl you got organization <laughs> skills for days god forbid someone else cheats on her because she's now ironed out all the issues oh, from yeah. this one <laughs> and she you can execute it first. yeah she'll post it after. that's true destroyed this guy's life part yeah. two <laughs> Absolutely. No, but I do hope yeah. she does not get cheated on again. That's no. that was I'm hopefully just not. <laughs> but yeah. So uh last story we got for today. This should one this one should be pretty funny and I kind of want to hear your takes about it because okay. you guys are just brand new cat parents. Oh. <laughs> so I I slapped the child in the face and then shoved him off his scooter. I'm 25. <laughs> I need more context, this is from- but and this is from an r slash confessions by post history man. He was like, he's like, all right, I was in a battle. Uh, how many five year olds can you take? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a beloved kitty named Pixie. She was around four when I found her on the street. She had a rubber band tie on half her tail, and I spent two weeks feeding her until she was comfortable enough to let me near her. She didn't trust anyone. I took her in, cleaned her up, and got the dead portion of her tail amputated. Mm. Mm. It's too bad Sean's not on this episode. He has a cat with. An amputated tail. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yes. So after five years, she finally warmed up to people and she became so sweet and friendly. It took her years to be comfortable around strangers. Last month, she was out for her daily stroll around the neighborhood and immediately came back in through the kitty door 20 minutes later. Usually, she is out and about for two to three hours. Mm. She had two small holes in her chest and one near her butt. She was completely mm. frightened and was crying, meowing. She wouldn't even let me go near her for the first five minutes. I knew for certain that she was shot with metal BBs. Oh, oh my God. I've had a cat that was shot. Yeah, you did. By an huh? actual gun though. Like we, <laughs> we live in like the middle, well, growing up, not anymore, but like we, my family lived in the middle of nowhere, which is where we're hopefully going to also be building our place. <laughs> and so our outdoor cats would be gone. They'd always come back at night, but they'd be gone. And one were, was gone for a week, two weeks. And we're like, it's a goner. We have fishers hit by a car or something like that. But it found its way back to us and it had been shot. Yeah. So whether it was like a hunter who thought it was something else or they shot it on purpose. And then we took it to the vet and they were going to amputate its leg, but then it didn't make it. Super sad. So I'm sad for this kitty cat. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will go John Wick on anyone that messes with my dogs. Like, yeah. I would like literally fight anybody who would. Oh my God. Well, it's just yeah. like, that would, that, I mean, unless it was a complete, like this, we'll, we'll get to this story, but yeah, unless yours was a complete accident, like, and even then it's like, you got to know what you're shooting at. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, if like, you that's, state, like you shouldn't be hunting. Yeah. Anymore. That's sure like what you're shooting at. Rule yeah. number one, like that could be a person that could be like a dog, a cat. Like you, you have to be sure what you're shooting at. So, uh, still. We're a furry. Describe describe, (laughs) a furry wandering around the woods. I mean, I guess. (laughs) So I take her in my car and start driving to the vet, but took a quick detour around the neighborhood. I was going to take the long way to see if I could find the culprit. Sure enough, I see a kid on a scooter standing on his driveway with a CO2 powered BB gun Mm. aiming in the drainage cavity by the sidewalks. I see cats in there all the time. It was then I knew who the culprit was. So I parked the car, got out, walked over to him and said, I'm telling your parents that you are shooting cats. He replied, they are pests. They told me I could. What the fuck? The smug little look on his face threw me over the edge. I slapped the fuck out of this bitch and kick sweeped his legs out from under him and watched him fall flat (laughs) on his ass. Okay. Uh I then picked up his gun and smashed it on the ground. A small part of me wanted to finish him off with a stomach kick for a good measure, but I'm fucking 25, so I looked both ways before crossing the street and fucking bolted. As I hopped in my car and sped away, I heard him shrieking in the distance. My kitty was treated and is doing okay. She is a lot more skittish and spends less time outside. And just as an addition, they put an edit. In case you were wondering, I'm pretty sure the cops were called 
When I came back, I saw a few strolling around. I was sure I was done. I've never been in trouble or done shit like this. Anyways, I drove by and literally nothing happened. It's been a month. I think I'm good. Wow. But, so, I mean, I laughed at that story because it's, it's funny. It's what but, you'd want to do. Yeah. yeah, but you shouldn't no. do that. You should slap I mean, a kid. I guess because I, I was going to say, like, you go to the parents first. That's your first thing. But yeah. I know he said that they let him, but, like, he could be lying. So, I mean, you check with the parents. If the parents are being idiots, then maybe you tell the police you're not like the police absolutely would still come and be like to this kid stop shooting yeah. the animals like they would deal with that they wouldn't like, I'd, feel like i'd be okay if he like broke the bb gun and then yeah. left and like didn't harm the child <laughs> like, that seemed yeah. that was over the line but like if he broke the bb gun just to teach him a lesson i guess i mean mm. it's still kind of an asshole mish move but like yeah you can't uh, hit a kid no you can't, you can't like, hit a God kid forbid something happened like he hit his head like yeah that's like, and like that would be on you like you're trying to do the right, not do the right thing. But I mean, you didn't do anything wrong. Your yeah. cat's hurt. You're upset. But like it could turn on you. Even breaking the gun, like they could, if they found it was him, like he'd have to pay for the damages or it's whatever. You know what I mean? So I don't know. You go to the parents and if the parents aren't doing anything about it, then you say, I'm going to call the police or bylaw or whatever and get them there. But I mean, like, damn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what tripped me out is this dude straight up leg sweat. Yeah, the way he described Are you it, kidding like, me? Holy. <laughs> You go like karate kid on this fool? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's probably like 10. But yeah, I, I'd agree. I, I probably would have gone to the parents first because I'm just like, one, it's your kid. Yeah. You, you letting them run around with a fucking yeah. BB well, gun. A, yeah, like exactly. Like that, that young. And if you're, if, if it's indeed true what the kid said, like, oh, my parents would let me shoot the cats. Like, why are you teaching kids that? Then that's you not, fight the dad. Cool. Yeah, and then it's less bad. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And then if they're mad about me breaking the gun, I'm just like, well, then shit, pay for my cat's vet yeah. bills because your kid just put two well, holes in my cat yeah that's, that's true too that's why you get bylaw or the yeah. police involved because maybe they would have to do that and also you want to help the other cats although i'm sure the kid is probably thinking twice about doing that again after being i don't know this kid by a 25 year old this kid sounds like a serial killer in the making well, that's the <laughs> issue too he needs some help probably yeah, yeah. so i definitely would have yeah probably reported it yeah. And then, like, got the parents to pay for the cat, and then... And you have to imagine if he was out there shooting at cats, so maybe more than mm -hmm. one, like, mm -hmm. other people in the neighborhood are also probably not happy about it, yeah. so you'd have a pretty good case to, like... And know, then if it doesn't work through the law, then you turn into Batman. And yeah. <laughs> you just wear a mask when you beat the cat yeah. up. It's better. <laughs> no. Yeah. Don't leg sweep kids. No. no. That's, a big that's, that's, that's no. the moral of the story. <laughs> Don't leg sweep kids. I've never heard anybody so whoop funny. someone's ass with a leg sweep before. Yeah. Like, that is new to me. <laughs> I guess it might only work on kids. So that's why. I wouldn't even know how to do that. How do you, like if how so, do you leg sweep them? As a grown adult, I don't know. Like You, you like put your leg out? Like one leg out? Like you try you gotta and do like, like a pretty much a... Like you put your leg out and then, yeah, you like kick their legs out. So <laughs> if you as an adult someone do, see, saw someone doing that to you, you'd just back up. But kids like... I maybe could not. probably leg sweep like, if you weren't. Yeah, if I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. I'll check I'll test this theory later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next time you guess, we want to know if you like if, sweat yeah. Josh. If I have not. bruises on the next episode, you know why. <laughs> hey, no. Josh's gonna call come, come up with a black like a black <laughs> eye all over the place. I'm okay, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. I would never. So that is it for the Reddit portion of this week's episode. Wikimaniac, stick around after the ad break, and you will be hearing this day in history. Featuring Denver Pop Festival's first day on June 27, 1969. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Wikimaniacs, to This Day in History a series where we take you back in time to learn more about what happened on this day throughout history. Today's date is June 27th, and we hope you're ready for some smooth tunes from 1969. Ah, the 60s in North America, filled with love, war, and debatably, good music. Speaking of music, when you think of music from 1969, does your mind automatically think of Woodstock? Well, that's fair, but did you know there was a large music festival that took place that year before Woodstock. Get your passport and time travel pants because we're going to Denver, Colorado for June 1969. On June 27, 1969, the first and only Denver Pop Festival opened at Mile High Stadium. 
Boo Broncos, Go Chargers. The festival would span over three days and had headliners such as Big Mama Thornton, Johnny Winter, Joe Cocker, Frank Zappa, Creedence Clearwater Revival, Jimi Hendrix, Tim Buckley, and among others. Tickets cost about $6 for a one-day ticket or $15 for the whole weekend. In 2022, it would have been about $47.73 for a one-day entry ticket, while the weekend would cost approximately $120. Needless to say, this festival was reasonably priced. According to numerous resources, the peak attendance was estimated at 50,000 people, all packed into the stadium and listening to the sweet sounds echoing around them. Although that sounds like a damn good time, the festival ended in tears. The website Rock Insights noted that the festival apparently closed out on June 29th with police attempting to clear the already rushed in field of music lovers with tear gas. That's right, Wikimaniacs, tear gas. It seems as though things were getting out of hand with both police and concert goers being attacked by one another, escalating with each action starting from Saturday night and further bursting into Sunday's performances. And some may have guessed it, this festival wasn't revived the following year. Many of the artists would never get the chance to play again, together, over a weekend like they did in Denver. The previously mentioned Woodstock Festival, which took place between August 15th to 18th, 1969, in Bethel, New York, seemed to overshadow the Denver Pop Festival that year. Woodstock would have over 350,000 more attendees in Denver and seems to be the one festival from 1969 that everyone talks about even to this day. Regardless, Denver Pop Festival may always be sung throughout music historians who perhaps dream of a day where it will be brought back to life. If it was to come back, who would you want to headline? Let us know over on our social media pages in the comments. For those who are curious, Denver still has other music festivals, For example, the Global Dance Festival, which is taking place July 15th to 16th. And that Wikimaniacs is what happened on June 27th, 1969. Today's rocking feature wouldn't have been possible without our good friend Alex Underbaki from Weird Distractions Podcast. If you like her writing, make sure to hire her. She is amazing. That's it this week, Wikimaniacs. We would love to hear your thoughts. Would you ever leg sweep a kid? Would you <laughs> write a story as great as that one? No, no, just leg sweep a kid. Just, just leave it at leg <laughs> sweep a kid. Would you leg question. sweep a kid? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, engage with us on TikTok, YouTube, or join our Discord channel and make sure to tell your friends all about us. If you have a favorite podcast that you want us to collab with, tag them for us, please. We would love to work with as much people as possible. Oh, yeah. Um, especially the popular ones, because we also want to get popular. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's why we brought Sienna on. She's the popular Exactly. One. Uh, just shout out. I've been running ideas by Josh. Not that I ever have time <laughs> for this. I have two jobs and then I'm like social life and all this stuff. But Sangria with Sienna, we have episodes, have some of my friends come on. We have some crazy stories, yep. my friends, some drama and stuff like. Put that behind the patron wall. (laughs) (laughs) Copyright that name. Yeah, I was like, like, Josh, give the people what they want. (laughs) Bam. (laughs) Just kidding. But I do, I have to, I want to say like, I appreciate all the, Josh showed me some of the comments that had me, or like on YouTube about like, good for her for like saying what she says. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. I hope a women's perspective is good. And I always say. I want to say I'm the talker. So. <laughs> she is the talker. Which Y'all is just ironic. to be a talker for us. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, the the sangria with Sienna. We'll see. We'll see if that comes about someday. I just would also enjoy just drinking the sangria. So that's a big part of it. <laughs> no cameras. <laughs> yeah, just me. <laughs> Again, huge thank you to Sienna for joining us today. And uh, Sienna, do you have anything you want to promote outside sangria? Uh, sangria. <laughs> Do you have any alcohol. like charities that you want to promote or I have to right off the bat like uh heart and stroke foundation for sure my dad's had two heart attacks so uh that's a big my father one. just um, experienced one so yes yeah yeah, yeah I heard about right. that so I mean it's tough for sure and it's hard when it's genetic and now my mom's a type 1 diabetic so diabetes foundations and stuff too would be a good one that's all I can really think of support your local museums <laughs> uh, well, again, thank you, Sienna, for joining us. And thank we will you see you this Friday for another episode of Am I the Asshole? Until then, toodles. Am I the Asshole? Peace. No. Okay, yes. Nice. Thank you. Yes. John says yes. <laughs> I was kind of hoping she said yes. <laughs> Damn it, John. <laughs> <laughs>
for the fifth time, it's your boy Sean. <laughs>